Hi, I'm Zach and I'm a Ruby developer. In this video I'm gonna walk through my most recent application that I built using Ruby on Rails and AngularJS. Um, to get started I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about it. Uh, this is a simple little application that I built to track any products that I sent into Amazon. Um, I can track the product original cost, the sell price, and how much quantity is left. Um, to get started here, I'll go ahead and just follow the instructions. I'm actually already in this, um, the install instructions here, I'm actually already in this directory. So now I'm going to go ahead and clone my project. And with that there, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move into the project. Make sure to go ahead and install any gems. All right, looks like all that went through. Now I'm going to go ahead and, well, I have an alias set for this. Uh, it's just rake db migrate. Uh, for me, it's just rdb, and that works. One thing, one thing worth noticing here is that I am getting warnings here. Um, these are deprecation warnings basically saying something. Um, this happens every time I start up a Rails server. I do believe that most of this is, let's see, it has to do with Angular's Rail, Angular Rails templates. I think, that, I think it has to do with the fact that Angular Rails templates is not updated for Rails 5. And I am using Rails 5 in this application as well as Bootstrap 4.0. Um, both of those are, you know, in beta or alpha stages, so not everything else is up to date with them. All right, now that I have that open, or now that I have, uh, you know, created all those tables, I'm going to go ahead and uh, spin up a Rails server. And once I see all the text here, that means I know I'm good. And I'll go ahead and uh, open it up. Now this takes me to my root route once it actually loads. It seems to be taking quite some time. And yes, it took 13 seconds. Who knows why? It's a good question. Um, anyways, I have this Welcome to Trackazon. It's a bunch of copy text and I don't have any users right now so I'm going to have to go ahead and sign up. Um, on this page, I'm using uh, devise, and I'm not uh, using devise in the Angular sense. I am just using devise as a regular interaction with my Rails backend. Um, I guess while I'm in here, I'll go ahead and open up Atom. That way, if I need to look at any code, it's right there. Um, so with this page open. Um, added a link up here to inventory which takes us to this page you can also do an about or a contact or a user can also look at their own page um, you know possible additions in the future including adding editing of user info and you know submitting that so that users can do that let's go back to this inventory page um, on this inventory page uh, I have a let me just go ahead and bring it up here. I don't think, yeah, this is an old version, so or those are old versions. So here, looking at my app.js, whenever I log in here, it takes me to inventory, which is this products slash index.html. And that is in a template folder. So templates right here, and then it's nested within this products folder, and then an index. Um, right now you can see that there's this table right here and then also this form. The table, I am uh, gen I'm essentially including it using the ng, ng include directive. Um, and then the form, I actually had to build out physically in here. Um, I did attempt to you you know abstract this out into its own partial and include it using the ng include but that seemed to mess up some of the routing so it's not there anymore anyways now that I'm on this page I can add a product um, let's see I can 
first I'm going to show the go ahead and show the validations. So these are Angular validations. So if I click in here and then I uh, you know move out, oh it says the product name is required. So let's go ahead and add a name. All right, test name. Oh okay, test the name must be more than five characters. Test name that works perfect. How much did it cost? It costed uh, about about tree fifty. Oh, that's not a valid number. Of course it's not. You know, this doesn't know what that is. So it, it cost about three fifty, and that ends up working out. How much am I selling it for? Uh, eleven D. Ah, oh, oops, eleven D or elven T is not a number. So we'll go ahead and uh, eleven D, or you could do. You know, 11.0, 11.00, or just 11 for 11. And you also need to say that you purchased a certain quantity. For this example, I'm going to say I purchased five. And whenever you click add a product, it, let me see if it shows here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add another product then. So we have product, we'll call it number two. You can see I'm very creative. Item costs two dollars. How much are we gonna sell it for? We're gonna sell it for fifteen dollars on Amazon. But we can only buy three of them. Let's go ahead and add that in there as well. So, boom! It went ahead and made a post, and then it also made a put action to uh, because there I have a scope dot watch on this quantity sold. So what happens is I can dynamically change the number of items that are sold simply by clicking up here and let me go ahead and scroll this over a little bit so boom each time you click it up it makes a, a little web request and you know it does a put action which updates it on the in the database and yeah Right now I don't have it so that it saves or anything like that, but, you know, it's still, well, it doesn't automatically save it and keep it in the back end. And what I mean by that is, you know, typically if this were like some sort of shopping cart, you could lock it in or something along those lines. Right now, like, oops, say you accidentally, you know, say you accidentally said you, you sold two, but you actually only sold one. Well, now... The way I have it set up is you can a user can go ahead and click back down and then it will uh, the JavaScript will interact with the Rails backend and go ahead and update that information in, in the database. That might be a little bit overkill, but it's good to have that uh, functionality. Um, and one way to go ahead and make this kind of save is that you have to go out to a different uh, URL, you know, click a link, then you go back in here, and then this just remembers. Um, and one of the features that I had to figure out, which was kind of a fun one, was this table here. Let me let me go in here. Um, actually, that's not there. It's in this product row directive. Let me go into the table real quick just to show you what's going on. So we have all this table header information, and then here, is the important angular information so we're doing an, a repeat for all the products and for each item that is, goes through that iteration it's going to be called a product and to make it a little bit less busy in here because there are all these different options here um, I abstracted this out into a product row directive so um, here's the directive here. You can see that I'm injecting the product service and that for this scope, I'm pass, you know, using this, uh, this identifier here, uh, the equal sign, I am assigning a value to each of these attributes. And where am I assigning that value? Right back here in, oh, I thought it stayed open, sorry. Right back here in that product table. So right here where it says item-id equals product ID, that correlates directly to this item, this camel case item ID. Um, with that said, you know, it uh, adds all these sorts of information right here. And it goes through, 
it sets some information about the initial minimum, which is, uh, this is what happens whenever you go back and forth here. So in this product row.html, for this input right here, there is an initial minimum that gets set back here in the product row.js directive. Um, you know, the next step here, or the next thing to, to kind of show is that we don't really want to see these products if they are out of stock, if we sell them all. So, one thing that exists here in this product row.html, oops, actually it's not there, it is in this table.html, is there's this ng.show. What this does is it checks the product attribute in stock, and then this product.instock attribute is instantiated right here. So for this local scope, dot in stock equals set in stock scope, which it seems really confusing, but this had to, this is what worked for me. Um, basically, what this is doing is it's taking, I, you know, I could have just directly called the uh, you know scope dot quantity quantity my scope dot quantity solved, but I kind of wanted to abstract that out just in case I ever needed that somewhere else. Um, and I went ahead and created, uh, you know, these functions down here. They get hoisted to the top of the file uh, upon compilation, and you know, it it sets us in stock, and then it also sets us in profit or the the profit value. Um, so what this ng show is doing is that if the product dot in stock returns true, it will show it on the web page. So for example, if we go ahead and realize that we sold the last two of these test name products, one, two, it disappears from the inventory. Right now, that's uh, pretty much the extent of the functionality. And the only other thing that really exists is I can log out. Um, and it should take you back to the root page. I think that's all for now. Thanks, and have a great day.